Another question that we have to answer when we study the digital divide is who are we actually studying? So what is our subject? What's the subject of connectivity? In this graph here, for example, we were talking about countries. So each bubble here is a country. Some are more connected. Well, we said two ways we can look at it, more devices or more bandwidth. And there is a divide between them, shows there are different locations in this map, and this is a digital divide among countries, a perspective of the international digital divide. But we could even zoom out even more on the international level and look at the divide among world regions. That means basically we group countries together that are in the same world region and have here now Europe with pretty high connectivity and Africa with pretty low connectivity. So here we have also an international digital divide, but in this case the nodes, the subjects are regions, world regions. And there are many ways you can cut this cake, many things you can focus on. For example, you can also go to the sub-national levels and here this graph shows you the usage of email in local governments and, and how that has grown. So what technology are we talking about? Well, email and what's the subject of study? It's, it's local governments and that gives you an outlook on the digital divide. And here you see the digital divide among companies. So these are firms and organizations and you see different technologies that are measured, computers, internet, websites and different applications that they're using. This gives you all insights on the digital divide and here the subject now, it is not countries, it's not individuals, it's organizations or firms. Here a last one, try to read this graph yourself. What does it say? Our basic subject of interest here is schools and we have connectivity uh, among public and private schools. So the blue bars refer to public, the red bars to private. And we have different kinds of technology, computers or computers with internet. Actually, there are some computers that still don't have connectivity. And you see how that has increased in Argentina and in Peru. So here the subject of studies are our schools. After we have chosen our subject of interest, we can ask what are the attributes, what are the characteristics of these subjects? And we try to find characteristics that help us to understand why some connect earlier than others and why some have more connectivity than others. So let's choose as our subjects individuals, really, really people. And some two of the most important attributes that we find that highly correlate with ICT access and usage are income and education, which both make sense. You have more income that helps to have ICT. And it's interesting to note that there's a standalone effect of education. So, so let's, let's see how that looks visually. So you have here the income segments of Brazil. These are the poorest 20% of society, the richest 20% of society. And you see that as income goes up, mobile phone, access and usage also goes up. So more income, more access. Uh, all of these people here have all a college degree. So they're all in college or graduated from college. And uh, you see that income is what matters here. Now we can look also at the dimension of education and we can see these are now all the rich people, the 20% of the richest, and we can see that education itself also has a standalone effect. So here we have people without formal education. They are rich, but they don't have formal education. And here are people who have a college degree and have money. So here you have the highest level of access. And so you have these two dimensional logic uh, where you have in this case, income and education, you can see and you can study now these independent effects here. Uh, the people without education and no income, they have the least uh, access to, to the digital realm. So you can study them and you can try to parse out which characteristics, which attributes really matter. Is it income and education? Of course, these both can be confounded as well. We call this spurious correlation because people with high income also tend to have high education. So is it because actually they have income and with that they or is it education? But so what you do is you basically you analyze them separately and say, well, people with 
college, all people with college, so same level of education, income matters, and people with the same income, education matters independently from that. And you find these independent effects uh, regularly uh, when you study access to and usage of digital technology. You can make this analysis as sophisticated as you like and integrate more variables that might explain you what matters in terms of internet access. So what I did here is I did a multiple regression analysis, a, discrimin a discriminant function. And if you have taken a statistical class, you might have heard about the correlations or multiple correlations or maybe even run one. How do they work? So I have one variable of interest, internet usage, and I try to find out, well, what other variables go together with that one? So in this case, I chose, for example, education, income, and also age. And it turns out that, yeah, education and income, these are the most important ones. So if you look at what are the characteristics of people that use the internet, you find, well, they have generally a lot of education and pretty good income. And with regard to age, it also matters. Adversely, you, you might say, because the younger you are, the more you tend to use the internet. And But there are also other ones, which job category you are in, or if you're currently enrolled in school. That also matters to explain it. And um, if you do these kind of studies and you run these kind of correlations, and, and I ran a lot of those in my life in, in search for answers of who is using the internet and in which kind of countries, which was that it's important for you to do policy. For example, if you want to foster connectivity, you have to know, well, who are you basically talking about? Who we have to help well, people with education or less income or age and where do we should do our access policy? So it's important to do this kind of analysis. And what you find is that then uh, these kind of attributes, especially if you use many, they explain an important percentage of the variance with regard to who uses the internet, but not everything. You can see that down here if you know how to read a regression, but that's basically what it says. And then there is a big part uh, that this analysis tells me. I, I don't know where it comes from. It doesn't come from the attributes of the individuals, from the attributes of the nodes. Uh, what else could there be what determines who connects earlier or later to, for example, the internet here? Right, it's the network structure, and that is not captured in just by counting the attributes. So basically what I do is I look if these nodes here are circles or triangles, what are their characteristics, but I don't look at the structure of the network. And that also plays a big role when you try to understand who connects when to how much of this new innovation.